Welcome to this demo video, where we are going to go through the available knob settings for the NN Super Resolution plugin. NN Super Resolution is an AI-powered upscale plugin for Nuke, but you probably already know this if you are watching this video, so let's dive straight into going through the available knobs instead. The best way to describe what the different knobs are doing and how they are affecting the plugin's behavior is to show examples at the same time. Let's start by scaling up an image with the resolution 960 times 540 to four times as much using a standard by cubic filter in Nuke, resulting in an image of 3840 times 2160, which happens to be exactly Ultra HD. So if you're looking at this demo on YouTube in max resolution on a 4K or an Ultra HD monitor, you'll see pixels in a one-to-one -one ratio, which I would recommend if it's possible for you. We then slowly wipe this by cubic upscaled image to the result of upscaling it using NN Super Resolution in still mode. This upscale was done using a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti GPU with 11GB of VRAM and the settings used were uh, max size 300, overlap 16 and padding 3, which you can see highlighted in red here in the knob panel. These settings resulted in the source image of 960 to 540 being sectioned up into 8 sub-images or image patches. You can see how many image patches the current knob settings together with the current input resolution will result in at the top section of the knob panel, highlighted in green. You can now see how these image patches were sectioned up. Green represent areas that are upscaled directly, meaning only once. Blue and red areas combined represents the overlap areas, which are calculated twice or more. The red areas alone represents the transition or crossfade areas between the overlapping image patches. We will now show you how the image patches sectioning pattern can change when you tweak the three special knob parameters. First, we lower the max size from 300 to 280. This results in the need to split up the image into another row of patches because the maximum resolution of a single patch is now only 280 times 280 pixels. The upside of going lower on the max size is that the need for GPU memory goes down. So if you are getting CUDA memory errors, this is the way to go. On the other hand, the fewer the number of image patches, the faster the full upscale of the input image will be. So the best way to optimize your result is to increase the max size as much as you can on your particular workstation without getting a CUDA error, of course. Let's now show you how increasing the overlap and padding changes how the image patches are sectioned from the input image. If you are increasing the overlap a lot, at some point you will also see that the actual number of image patches will increase. This is because the overlap is included in the max size of the image patches that are being processed on the GPU and the full patch needs to respect the max size knob value. The image patches are calculated one after the other from bottom left to top right, like you see here. If you are processing more layers than only RGB, the extra layers will be processed for each patch first, before continuing on to the next patch. The next setting is specific to upscaling using the still mode and is called multi-sample, here highlighted as yellow. Multi-sample is a filtering option to give you the option of smoothing the upscaled result. What it, what it does behind the scenes is running the upscale four times, but with an input image oriented in different mirrored and rotated ways. After this is done, the results are averaged together and outputted as the final result. While being much slower, it can sometimes be well worth the wait for the resulting image detailing quality. It all depends on your specific input image, photo or texture. The last knobs to go through are related to using the plugin's sequence mode, here highlighted in magenta. When sequence mode is active, you get a drop-down menu for the knob called Type, inside the highlighted area in Cyan here. There are four different options which are as follows. Plates Alexa, Plates Legacy, CG and Hybrid. The first one is the best for most film material. It's trained on professional production plates filmed with the Arri Alexa cameras. The second one is the original or legacy neural network the NL Super Resolution plugin was shipped with when it started featuring sequence mode. It is trained on lots of downloaded HD videos from Vimeo instead. Usually this doesn't produce as good results as the Alexa network, but it is available as an alternative for you if you want to experiment. 
The third option called CG is trained on lots of rendered computer graphics, which makes it support upscaling on rendered images with a matching alpha channel. Good to know is that the material needs to be pre-multiplied to upscale correctly. The fourth option is a hybrid between CG and Plates Alexa, basically upscaling the RGB part using the Alexa network, but the alpha part using the CG network. This sometimes yields better results than the pure CG one, uh, since the Alexa Plates network had lots more good and complex and detailed material to train from than the CG batch of images that we had available. You simply got to try around and decide for yourself which one is best suited for your needs. The next knob called Frame Range should be very straightforward and self-explanatory. You need to specify the frame range the sequence mode should use to produce the upscaled result. If you try to process frames outside of this frame range, they will be rendered as all black. The last knob is called Pre-Roll. Pre-Roll specifies how many frames before the current one that should be used to calculate the current frame's result. Basically, the plugin needs to do a run-up of upscaling frames ahead of the current frame to be able to produce the upscaling while also maintaining it temporarily coherent and stable. The good news is that if you have already calculated current frame using the calculated pre-roll, the next frame will be much faster since the current frame's result is cached. This means that if you are jumping around in the timeline, every frame will need to calculate the full pre-roll, but if you instead calculate frames sequentially one after the other, you will only need to calculate the first frame using pre-roll. An important thing to take away from this behavior is that it's usually worth rendering multiple sequential frames in longer chunks when using a render farm to upscale long sequences. Something like 10 to 20 frames per chunk have proved very successful in our own testing. And this concludes the knob reference demo. Thanks for watching.